and he's on the line in our Sydney studio. Mark Donaldson, good morning. Good morning, Neil. How are you? You were an absolute idiot at times, weren't you, when you were a kid? <laughs> hey? Yeah, yeah, I was a bit of a, well, I like to call it a professional dirtbag, so yeah, it, uh, yeah, yeah, I, you know, I had my moments. I think every young person has their moments, but... Oh, you were um, out there, though. A green mohawk, some mm. violent incidents, drunken vandalism, smashing windows, drunk driving, smashing up cars. Yeah, 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 it was all there. It was, uh, look, I was definitely trying to find what limit I could reach, that's for sure. Even before school, drinking vodka and smoking. Mm, yep, yeah, I thought that was definitely the cool thing to do. Um, yeah, you know, and that was just, uh, I guess it was a part of that self-destructiveness that I was into and, and or leading into, especially at that time. Um, and that was even before what happened to my parents, um, which probably would have been more of an excuse, I guess, or even a, uh, a cause and effect scenario. But um, yeah, you know, that's just what I was uh, rebelling against against the system, I guess. Um, just describe, yeah. describe to me that low point. You woke up in the gutter covered in your own urine and vomit <coughs> and worse mm. Mm. Uh, after a drunken night out. Yep. That's pretty low. It's pretty low, isn't it? Yeah, think? it is pretty low. I mean, probably the worst part about that was getting caught between the train and the, the platform that night. Um, nearly got killed. And nearly got run. Yeah, nearly got, well, you know, whatever would have happened when the train took off. But luckily, they, they saw me and they didn't they didn't drive off. But, um, yeah, look, you know, I was I was just on a roll. Um, I was just trying to see how far I could take it. And, you know, I just didn't realise I was going down instead of, um, instead of going up. And, you know, it took a while to sort of figure that out. And... Um, you know, especially after the, you know, that was after the death of my father and then not very long after that was the, the phone call I made to find out and, and subsequently ended up going up to Dorigo to find out about my mother who had been um, disappeared and, and later found out to have been murdered, uh, never to be found. So that, uh, you know, that was all a part of, I guess, of that uh, realisation that I needed to change my life and that, um, you know, some of the thoughts that you have can become reality and you really got to choose the good ones. Uh, which is which was what it was all about for me after that, I guess. Uh, just trying to you know <laughs> make my life a little bit better instead of uh, ending up skittled across the train track. Were you angry with the world? Is this why you're doing that? Do you think is that uh, why you were? I mean, we we all push the boundaries when we're kids, but this was something else. Were you angry? Yeah, I think I was angry. You know, I mean, and I didn't know why. Um, to a degree, uh, I think I was probably angry at the world, especially what happened to my not so much my father, but definitely my mother. Um, but, you know, luckily I was kind of on the way out, I guess, of, of all that, uh, excuse me, self-destructive behaviour. So um, I was kind of lucky. I, I kind of come across that experience and event in my life probably towards the end of that behaviour. But I could have so easily have gone the wrong way uh, or the other way now, you know, and I could have ended up in jail. And, and that's definitely where I was heading. Well, that's what I was going to ask. You know, you've gone from pretty desperate days to a national hero. What, and I know you're not comfortable with that, but that's that's the reality. Mm. If it hadn't been the army, what do you reckon? What would have, what would have happened to? You? Yeah, that's uh, look. I, you know, and in the book, I didn't really reflect too much on that. Um, and it's probably you know maybe something that uh, that might be in another book. Not saying that I'm writing another one, but um, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Who knows where I would have ended up? Uh, even if I had got out of that rut and gone and done something different. Um, Look, you know, I was seriously considering going and becoming a deckhand on a surf travel boat over in Indonesia as well. That was a pretty good option, um, which would have been nice. <laughs> but uh, my surfing would have improved a lot better than what it is now. But, um, but you reckon there was a chance you could have ended in jail? You could have, yeah. You could have ended, you know, with booze problems or anything? Yeah, for sure. I mean, definitely, you know, and, and all because of what? I mean, there was nothing really there causing it. I think it was more just probably teenage angst and um, uncertainty with what and where and who I was in life. Um you know, and then to have events such as my father's heart attack and death at 15 and then my mother's uh, murder disappearance at 19, you know, it was, like I said earlier, it was probably a good reason to actually go off the rails. Um, yeah, but but you were already off them. But I was already off them, that's right. Mm. So you know, I could have gone further and I probably did a little bit uh, and probably did use it a little bit as an excuse to do that sort of stuff and push those limits. But uh, in the end, I... I realised that that wasn't the way I should be living my life and the way I shouldn't honour my, my uh, parents and my family name and I needed to do something different and, and you know, sort myself out and actually go and, you know, uh, use the gift of life that I've been given to go and enjoy it and do something different. I wanted to get to that because you, you're clearly still angry about your mother's <coughs> murder in particular, aren't you? Yeah, well, it's, it's still upsetting, that's for sure. Um, angry, you know... I, I, it's been quite a quite a while now, now you know, and it's it's probably a little bit more numb than anything. But uh, I guess, in a sense, trying you know, through writing this book was to maybe you know make 
make people realise, especially at that parent level and, and even down to the younger years, you know, young teenagers, to really value and uh, just be happy with what they've got and take that moment out to tell your parents that you love them and, you know, cherish the fact that they're there and they're around to be able to, to you know, be called upon or uh, to enjoy that time you have with them. And that's, that's the important point I think I was trying to get across, um, subliminally anyway. I wonder whether, you know, the way you're so driven in life and the things you've achieved... Do you reckon you, and even when your dad was alive, you're always trying to impress him, trying to do the right thing, you know, yeah. uh, helping butchering animals and going, you know, hiking or water fishing or whatever it was. Yeah. Do you reckon that through life you, you're perhaps even still trying to prove something to your parents, or is that is that looking a bit deep? Uh, look, I, don't, I don't know. I think, maybe, I think maybe that time's passed definitely now, now that I've got my own family. But um, look, you know, I mean, I'm always trying to better myself, and I think that's a, a, an important quality for me is to always try and improve what you're doing. And, and you know, uh, I think it was maybe Pope John Paul who said, see everything, observe a lot and improve a little. Mm. Uh, and that was, you know, that's kind of, you know, kind of what I'm trying to do, I guess. Um, but you certainly felt that you failed your mother when she's alive, didn't you? Well, you know, I always felt that, I, that if I was there, I probably could have done something about it. Um, you know, if I was around it. Uh, you know, that sort of carried through, I suppose, to, you know, even overseas and when I was serving in the um, SAS and over in Afghanistan and, and some of the guys would be killed in action. Yeah. You know, I, I just used to, I used to think about that. I used to think, well, what if I was there? What could have I done differently that might have, um, you know, changed that scenario? And, you know, I did find myself, I guess, um, not that I was thinking of it at the time, but in that situation on the 2nd of September 2008 when the when we're in that ambush, um, that four-kilometre-long ambush, uh, and the turp the Afghan interpreter had been blown off the vehicle and, you know, getting shot out out in the open and, and I ran out there to get him. Um, you know, I was lucky enough to be at that position at that time and then take that opportunity that had been sort of presented to me. Yeah, but was it, wasn't it your mate who said it was the dumbest thing he'd ever seen? <laughs> yeah. yeah, he did. He did say that. Well, was it dumb? Um, well, I don't think it was dumb. I mean, I think it was just, it's war. You know, it's a firefight and things happen and people do things in fights. Sometimes you get away with it, sometimes you don't. But did you weigh it up or did you just do it? Um, I didn't have a lot of time to really process all those thoughts. And I think I did weigh it up and it was one of those things, you know, and I can make that, I can do that. And so I went and did it. Um, yeah, but you didn't know how far away he was. No, I didn't. I didn't realise that until I sort of got there and turned around and saw how far away the vehicle was getting uh, and more far away because it was driving off. So, um, yeah, I mean... You put yourself in these situations, and I think I'd done that a lot when I was younger, probably in a negative way, you know, uh, through through alcohol and you know, these situations I was getting into being a rat bag. And you know, on the flip side of that, in a, in a positive way, I, I was be able to use that that drive and that force that I'd, you know, that level of pushing myself to reach what my limits were. You know, I was able to use that for a good thing to be able to get into the military, um, you know, the SAS, and then subsequently you know those scenarios that i found myself in you call a book the crossroad and there are there are various crossroads through through the book it's not just a story about going into battle going to although that's in it it's not just mm. a story about what you did to receive the to be awarded the vc yep. there's all these crossroads mm. that action you took that day uh saving the interpreter is one of the crossroads you made the decision yep. uh decisions you've made in your civilian life like to join the army and 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 the rest of it that's all part of the crossroad. Yeah. What is the what is the real point that you would like to and, and you touch it a little in the book what you would like people to take away from it, but who are you aiming at? Who would you like to reach here? Yeah, well that's an interesting question now, you know. And with the book I didn't want to um, start the book with saying this is why I've written it or end the book with this is why I've written it. Um, and the reason that is because I wanted people to in maybe in a creative sort of um, strange type of way is for people to read it and take what they want from that book. You know, whatever they read into whatever events in there is the inspiration that they gain from it, and that's what I wanted to achieve. I felt if I'd um, topped it or tailed it with, you know, this is what I want to achieve with this book, then there's a preconceived conception there when people read the book, and then they might not um, get out of it what, you know, what they would like to get out of that book. And that's that's kind of, you know, what I was trying to achieve with it, along the same line of not only inspiring, you know, definitely the younger generation to say, hey, you know, there is, <laughs> you know, you don't have to keep going down that road if you're in a place in your life and you really feel like making a change and it's definitely possible don't wait just go and do it um you know don't think you haven't got the confidence to go and make a change because you can and you know i guess long answer as well is for all the mums and dads out there and all the parents to cherish their children and, and for the children to cherish them and also the mums and dads and um 
you know, grandparents and grandfathers and stuff to see what it's like, from my opinion, as a soldier, what it was like in Afghanistan. And, um, you know, I think that was an important point as well, to have that soldier's voice, and you know, albeit my voice, I'm not speaking for everyone, but you know, have that soldier's voice from Afghanistan to say this is what we've gone through and this is what can happen uh, in war. We need to take a break. Just one thing as we go to the break, though. I mean, you, you and the other SAS guys have, have with some reason got the reputation of being supermen you know with your fitness and what you can do and your health you got flat feet you suffer from motion sickness yeah you chew tobacco or did you still did, smoke yeah. no no not anymore not no, anymore i hate it how on earth did you get into this <laughs> <laughs> it's uh yeah i mean you know that's one of those things you sort of look at it and go that the parallel from where i was to where i ended up is so vast it, it doesn't even seem like reality it seems like fiction but I guess that's the thing I like about it and what I was trying to achieve is that, hey, you can go and be anything and do anything you want to be, uh, regardless of where you've come from, regardless of what's happened in your life. Uh, all it takes is a bit of motivation and a bit of drive and commitment and, and you can achieve what you want. Talk. 